What's up guys, this is Emmanuel and we're back filming another video with the blue hat. This is him. And today we're actually gonna be installing the cold air intake that I ended up getting for him. So, this is the kit. It's, uh, I got it off eBay. It was about $180. This is the air filter right over here. It's actually a pretty nice kit. Comes with uh, heat shielding. It's from AF Dynamics. I haven't really heard of them, but um, I think it, it'll be pretty good. So uh, let's get to it. So I just went and uh, I took the car for a drive. So it gets a little warmed up. And I want you guys to hear how the intake sounds just so I can do a before and after clip. So here we go. That's enough revving and yes yes the car is warm so nobody write in the comments that the car is not warmed up because I went to drive it just so it can get warmed up just so I can take this clip okay cool first step we got to do This whole air box is going to be out. It's going to look a lot nicer. Also, whoever had this car before, they put on a K&N uh, filter. A sticker, actually. There's, not, there's no K&N filter in this. It's all stock. So I really don't know why they did that. But <laughs> let's get started. Here's the air intake kit. These are some, this is some, some of the heat shielding for the intake some rubber hoses as well as some clamps there's this tiny uh, booklet with some some more stickers and uh, just information overall and obviously the air filter which is the most important so it's gonna be quite an install I think it's gonna look a lot better okay guys first thing you want to go ahead and do is unscrew the stock air box there's two screws right here they're both 10 millimeters in my case I don't know why there's a missing screw You want to go ahead, unclip the mass airflow sensor right here, undo that clamp over there. I believe it's either a six millimeter or you can use a flathead. Yep, it's a six millimeter. So once you undo that clamp, you want to pull this out the boot and also grab this air box gently when you pull it out pull it out and push it towards the driver cabin so it looks something like this there you go this might fall out but that's no big deal Okay, next up what you want to do is if you're when you look down there, there's those two clamps right there. You're going to want to undo that lower one, so that one over there. That will allow us to remove this intake boot, but first we have to take out this little elbow piece for the vacuum uh, system. These are an absolute pain in the ass to take out. Really what you're going to want to do is pull on it. It's, it's one of those things where you take it out once and you put it back and then you're like, I never want to take it off again. So what I found useful, and especially if you're not keeping this intake boot, and I'll show you why I'm not keeping mine, you can actually get a screwdriver, not the most ethical, whatever, you just got to get it out. You want to go ahead, get a screwdriver and kind of nudge it in there.
see again i'm not keeping mine so i ended up breaking it but um i did take it out before without without breaking it so i know it's possible to take that out without breaking it but i don't really care for this intake booth and i'll show you why again in just a second next up as i said you got to remove that clamp over there Now I want to go ahead and show you guys why I'm not keeping this booth. So obviously when I took out that elbow, this piece right here, it cracked. But the true reason why I'm not keeping this booth, look at that. There you go. This is why I, also part of why I um, chose to upgrade. Uh, this booth is, it's very common on these E46s for this to crack. So I just ended up, instead of just replacing this, I thought to myself I might as well upgrade to an actual cold air intake. So this right here, garbage. Don't need it anymore. So what you want to go ahead and do next, this right here, this is what the air, stock air box rests on. There's this tab right here you want to pull, unclip. And this right here is just a piece of rubber that should come right up. Given that it's been in there for 20 years. There you go. Now it's out, as simple as that. So now you wanna go ahead and grab the upper intake booth that came with the kit. And there's gonna be this rubber grommet that you have to push in there. It's gonna take a little bit, but... You have to get edge to edge. There you go. That's pretty good. Yeah, so this right here, this is where the elbow, that uh, that guy over there, that's where that's gonna go into the to this piece. Right now, next thing you wanna do is grab this piece that we just worked with and get it placed in there. Don't tighten that clamp just yet, but you do want to get this uh, elbow in there. So it would look something like that. So here's some of the um, heat shielding that I was talking about. The kit came with some already pre-cut. So all you have to do is get it stuck onto the inside part, which is gonna be facing your intake. So these, this uh, kind of a cardboardy, peel, this thing peels off and you'll be able to stick it onto the actual metal. Okay, so after you applied some of the heat shield, it should look something like this. This is how the parts are going to go together. So let's get back to the engine bay. So now that we're back at the car, I went ahead, I grabbed the heat shield. I put this rubber grommet around the whole heat shield. It came included with the kit. And next you have to attach the air duct as well. And we're just going to go ahead and put it in. Pretty straightforward, just like that. Next up, uh, you want to go ahead and grab. There's two washers and two nuts that come with the kit, and there's two bolts sticking out. So this one right here, and the other one over there. You want to go ahead and put those washers on, and as well as the nuts. Oh, okay, that was bad. Don't do what I just did. Rescue mission complete. <laughs> that was almost bad. You want to go ahead and start the thread with your hand if you can. Okay, go ahead and grab your ratchet with a number 10. And you need a longer one for this one. So since that bolt is sticking out, the small socket won't do it. So you need to go ahead and grab a 
grab the long one, just like this one. Hand tight should be good. Oh yeah, that's plenty full. That's awesome, okay. I think the easiest way is to kind of do it from under, try and get the thread started. Okay, that's that started. And show you guys. You want to go ahead and tighten it from over here. Okay, now that that's all done and it's hooked on, you can go ahead and grab this rubber piece. It's gonna be kind of a tough time getting it in there. Okay, that's one, two. But what you're mainly concerned about is that uh, heater hose. You want to get it back clamped on. I'll show you guys in just a moment. The heater hose I was talking about is that one right over there. I don't know if you guys can see this rubber for me, actually it broke off. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a zip tie to get that secured. Next thing you wanna go ahead and do, grab the old air, air box and there's gonna be these two clips, one on this side, one on this other side. Unhook those and you should be able to pull out the mass airflow sensor. There you go. Next step is you want to go ahead and grab the mass airflow sensor and the kit should come with a little rubber grommet that slides on just like that. Pretty easy if I can get it. There you go. The rubber grommet slides on just like that. And you want to go ahead and use one of the clamps right over here and the other clamp where it's going to clamp onto the upper intake boot. So. Let's get to it. So in my case, this clamp right over here is an eight millimeter, sorry, seven. Just go ahead and uh, screw that on. Okay, uh, I would say that's on pretty snug. So let's go ahead and move to the upper intake boot. So the reason why I was telling guys to not get that intake boot uh, clamped on just yet is because we need to get the mass airflow sensor in there and into the heat shield so it'll look something like this go ahead get the clamp onto the boot get the mass airflow sensor in there That just about checks out. Awesome. So now that the intake boot is uh, connected and the mass airflow sensor is in the spot, you want to go ahead and screw that other clamp. Get this clamp. You want to go ahead and get that clamp that's all the way back there. And next up, the part that we've all been waiting for is getting the mass airflow sensor hooked onto here. And then you just want to go ahead and screw this last clamp. And the last step would be getting that mass airflow sensor plugged in. There you go. 
Okay, that looks pretty good. Seems like she's all done. Let's go ahead and uh, give her a key. Okay, so as far as everything goes, it's pretty much all mounted. Looks good. I think we're ready to uh, close the hood. Okay. Now let's go ahead and see how it sounds. Hear a pretty big difference. Yeah, I mean, uh, if you ask me, I'd say that's pretty good for hundred eighty dollars. Not to mention that it fixed my uh, my cracked air booth, and overall sounds better. And who knows, maybe not maybe. I know it performs better. I'm not going to have any metrics on that because uh, I'm not going to take this car to a dyno. But um, other than that, uh, this job is done. And okay, guys, so right now it's a little bit later in the day and uh, I just have my mom helping me film this. So we're just going to hear how the intake sounds while driving around a little bit. Just so you guys know, uh, this is definitely filmed in Mexico, just for everyone's reference. Beautiful sunset as well. Say hi, mom. It's also pretty nice on side 53. Hoping to uh, clear out some traffic so we can actually get some uh, actual pulls in so you guys can truly hear how the uh, intake sounds. I think it sounds pretty good. Uh, definitely an improvement over the stock. I, I honestly, I think I would recommend this to uh, just about any E46 owner. You can definitely hear a lot more during uh, the higher RPMs. I think it sounds great. Okay, right now we're gonna have the windows closed a little bit just so we can hear the actual noise inside the cabin when uh, when you're not trying to drive super crazy. Uh, keep in mind this is actually a convertible model so you might be able to hear it a little more than the actual coupe or, um, or the sedan. inside the cabin is actually not that bad. I think you can definitely hear a lot more when driving with the windows down. Um, so it's nice that it's not too crazy in your face to a point where it's not too crazy in your face to a point where 
it's obnoxious. I love the fact that you can still hear with the windows down or in my case with the top down if you do have the convertible model. And uh, you can definitely hear a lot more uh, when you downshift. So it looks something like this. guys so that's how the intake sounds again as I was saying I think it overall sounds really good for especially for $180 considering it has the heat shielding and it's basically the whole kit including the upper intake booth um, I'll leave a link down below for the intake and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one peace